There's an emerging contaminant in the Chesapeake Bay and its tributaries, microplastics, are the result of our decades-long reliance on plastics and the sometimes careless ways we discard them. When plastics break down in the water into microplastics, the tiny specks become a threat to the fish that eat on them, and perhaps even to you and me. Scientists say just how much of a threat might not be known for years. The Chesapeake Bay is a treasure. Its miles and miles of shoreline remind us we are tidewater. The bay welcomes us home. It's an economic driver for our region and a vulnerable and sophisticated ecosystem being threatened by plastic. Along this small stretch of shoreline in Portsmouth is a smorgasbord of trash. And you can see everything from water bottles, you know, to, to plastic, to plastic bags. All of this once belonged to someone. We found a sneaker, dozens and dozens of construction hard hats, even a traffic drum. How long would something like that take to break down? Thousands of years. Every bit of this is the ugly side of our reliance on plastics. What we're seeing is only a, a very, very small part of the problem. Moore says the bigger problem is these plastics will break down here in the hot sun. Some of this trash will end up back in the bay to be torn apart by tides, forming microplastics. The tiny specks of plastic pose a significant risk to a host of juvenile fin fish found in the Chesapeake Bay. There's concern as well that oysters and clams may be trying to filter microplastics and can't. This is a shrimp that's ingested microplastics. This is not just a concern for the environment. A 2016 study showed the commercial seafood industry in Virginia and Maryland contributed $1.4 billion in sales and 30,000 jobs to the local economy. Education is so important as well. Making sure that things don't blow into our waterways or don't blow into our storm system. Because uh, unfortunately when they do, you know, they end up on, on areas like this. I think the biggest thing we know is that they're everywhere. Meredith Evan Seeley is an expert in microplastics with the Virginia Institute of Marine Science. She says the contaminant is persistent in the environment. They may change in shape, they may get smaller and fragment a bit over time, but for the most part they're here to stay. And what's more concerning is that their sources are not decreasing. Microplastics contamination first showed up in the Chesapeake Bay 10 years ago. And scientists say it may take another decade to know for sure their full impact on the creatures who live in the bay, perhaps even on you and me. We don't know a whole lot about how it works its way up through the food chain, mainly because the the pieces of plastic that are most likely to make its way through the food chain are really tiny. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation says it has yet to study the amount of plastics in the bay. All of this once belonged to someone who lost it, tossed it, or simply wasn't careful enough. New technologies are being developed to better catch plastics before they end up here. And local researchers are working on things like a more environmentally friendly gunshot shell. But for now, if we don't want plastic in birds and fish, much of that is on us. And the pandemic has created another challenge. All of these masks that we wear, there's plastic in this, another source of microplastics. Clean the Bay Day returns this year bigger than before because of the pandemic. It's a six day virtual event instead of a big gathering on one day. It's from May 31st to June 5th. You can clean up at your own pace. Registration opens later this month.